What will our education system, our science curriculum look like in 2030? Of course, no one can predict the future, but we do know the world is going to look very different in 2030. Climate change, population migration, the switch of the balance of economic power to Asia, and of course, the transformative effects of technologies that we've yet to dream of. All these features, all these aspects are going to have a major impact on science, education, and how it's delivered. We need to ensure that we have a highly trained teaching workforce, teachers that can understand how not only will our curriculum in science change, but the means of delivering it are inevitably going to change dramatically beyond anything that we can imagine today. Hello, my name is Julia Higgins and I want to talk to you about the Royal Society project developing a vision for science and maths education. I'm vice chair of the steering committee of this project. When we're talking or writing about the vision project, I have three big ideas in my head. The first one is the wonder and excitement of science and mathematics. The second is the life skills that any citizen is going to need for the 21st century. And the third, and for many people the most important, is the myriad career opportunities that are open if you have a basic education in science and mathematics. There's something wrong to me with an education system that allows children, and indeed sometimes encourages them, to drop out of science and maths education so early that they close to themselves those opportunities and those enrichments and those basic skills for their future lives. Uh, my name is Ray Dolan. I'm a neuroscientist and I work at University College London. I think it is critical that citizens of the future are endowed with the appropriate tools to think correctly about the world, to think logically and systematically and to appraise evidence. I think the most fundamental basis for this is to be found in mathematics and mathematical uh, literacy. So I would like to be able to promote the idea that citizens in 20 years' time would be endowed with a, an ability in mathematics that is akin to their ability in literature, in sports, or in any other domain of learning. I'm Robert Winston. I work at Imperial College London. I'm, amongst other things, I supervise a project which involves bringing children into the university to do practical work on a daily basis. In my view, if we really want to change our society, we have to invert the pyramid. At the moment, what we do is to invest vast sums of money, relatively speaking, into secondary education, and primary school education is very limited. If we're going to change our society, I think what we have to do is to really work on eight or nine-year-olds, because by the age of 10 or 11, we've lost children. But one of the problems, of course, here is that there needs to be a long-term investment. This isn't something you can do over two or three years. But investing in the brain when it's most plastic at younger ages must be a huge value for the future. My name's David Swinscoe. I've been teaching for science in England for about 30 years, um, mostly in the college sector. So I've taught mostly 16 to 18-year-olds. I think if you're in a, a science lesson in the future, what I'd like to see you doing is deciding what question it was you wanted to answer and being able to formulate the question in a manner which allowed you to construct an experiment or construct some kind of investigation that let you test your theory and was not so obsessed with your ability to um, regurgitate facts in an examination. I'd like to see much more diversity in the people who come through to science. I think we've got a lot of talent that we're not tapping into and we need to make sure that our science education doesn't put off or exclude people on the basis of their background. It's a democratic right to be able to access the culture of the society to which you belong. My name is David Phillips. I'm the immediate past president of the Royal Society of Chemistry, so I'm a chemist. And I do a great deal of outreach work trying to enthuse young people with, uh, with science. 
But what I really want to see is that every student in the United Kingdom is, has an understanding of science such that they can enter into debates which are of enormous importance, debates about climate change, about uses of medicine, about agriculture, uh, all of the things which impinge on our lives and will increasingly do so as the world population increases. So we want students aged 18 to have had an exposure to science. I want students to understand the scientific method. It is never black and white. There is always an issue of probabilities. And we want students to understand that it is the balance of those probabilities which uh, dictates what is accepted in science. And therefore, using the scientific method, you can come to conclusions about our everyday lives uh, and the kind of legislation that we might need, but it must be science-based. Our committee is well aware of the many pressures teachers are under today. We're not trying to come up with newfangled ideas or half-baked plans imposing on teachers. We need to know from you what you think the future science classroom will be like. Of course, we can't predict the future any more than you can. But we need you to help us, you as the teaching profession, as the professionals, to help us try and come up with a vision for a new, a modern and inspiring science curriculum.